Lake Gunnersville. Whoop, whoop, lead. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. Whoa, with that go. Boys. Welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing and welcome to beautiful state of Alabama guys. We, we made it here. Finally, it's a little bit chillier up here, but we'll get used to it. Bog, come here. Come here, baby. Bog, Bog likes it so much. It's so cool and comfortable. Yes. Good for fishing. Do you see where he's posted up? He's like sitting in front of the boat because guess what? We're going fishing tomorrow, but he like won't allow me to hook up the boat until like I assure him. Yes, you can come fishing. No, you can go fishing. Ball goes fishing, right? No, here's the deal. We are going to wait. Hold. Let me show you. We're going there, right there. Do you know what that is? You see what that says? Guntersville Lake. Oh, Lake Guntersville, boy. Tomorrow, we got a date with Lake Guntersville, dude. That, by the way, that's the seat. Wait, let's look at that real quick. It's for Alabama. Let's scroll in. Check this out. I'm gonna put up. I don't know if I already put it up, but there's a custom shading video. Up. Check out the definition. Check out the definition. It's kind of cool, huh? We are going to, and actually I'm gonna need that because I have no idea how to run the lake. It's another thing I'm a little scared about, but we'll talk about that down the road. We are going to Lake Gunnersville. The Lake Gunnersville. Why are we going there? Well, because that's gonna be one of my like new local lakes that I'm gonna be fishing. The other reason is my buddy Kyle Walter is a Florida guy. Check him out now on Instagram, I'm Kyle Walt Bass 7. Kyle Walt Bass 7. Yep, I always screw him up, dude. He just won the Costa Championship, dude. Huge freaking tournament on Lake Gunnersville, and guess what he was doing? punching so i guess this time of year like it's well known that there's a frog bite and there's a bit of a mat bite um it's a little bit less this year because i guess they got a bunch of rain but dude like wh why wouldn't we go to lake gunnersville if there's even like that much that much of a punching or a mat bite so that's where we're going tomorrow first time fishing it for real alone scary we're gonna target fish that i understand i understand how to punch i don't know how much of a grind it is i guess it's kind of tough fishing but it's getting a lot of pressure a lot of boats they just had a huge tournament out there but i don't care dude if there's mats i can grind on them all day even if we catch just one fish so the goal challenge whatever you want to call it let's just catch one decent size it's got to be three pounds or bigger right three pounds or bigger gunnersville punching bass make sure you give a thumbs up for bog if you don't give it for me make sure you like and subscribe check out the new swag that's coming bass attitude fishing actually i got one of the shirts on this isn't my shirt but we're gonna be selling shirts mikey ball shirts and a balls hat Right now, though, I have the Tackle Warehouse beanie on because I'm freaking cold. Before we actually jump to the lake, you probably thought we'd be at the lake by now. I want to run through real quick. You guys always like some tackle tips mixed in, and I want to tell you, you know, we all have our specializations. One of my specializations, uh, like I love offshore fishing. It's going to be different up here, but I love to punch, and it's one thing where I think I do know a lot about it. I have a lot of experience doing it, um, especially down south, but punching, is there's variations on the theme, but it's pretty much the same thing. But when I go out there tomorrow, I'm going to punch. Like, that's going to be my main central kind of technique that I'm going to use. I'm not going to vary. I'm going to grind it out. I know there's punching fish. That's what I'm going to try to target and pick up. So you can see I got a bunch of stuff that I can use. But the whole trick is is to have a few rods ready so that you're ready kind of to present different variations on a theme, kind of like what we talked about. So of course you're gonna have your standard, which is a one and a half straight shank. I got my double bobber stoppers. Um, that's a hog tech wake. And I have my, um, whatchamacallit, my, wow, stuttering, my Strike King hack attack hook. Um, snelled, of course, because it kicks the hook up. Whoop. Whoop. What I'm rigging up right now is also another one and a half. Boop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a punch skirt on it. Uh, these are the quick change punch skirts, Gambler. I don't know if I'm going to go black and blue or something a little weirder. I'm going to have to dig through my skirts a little bit. But I'm going to have a punch skirt with that same rig set up. Because sometimes, and especially on systems that are like river involved, obviously Gunnersville is dammed up river. It's the TVA, Tennessee River. Um, that's going to be an integral kind of 
presentation have and not a bunch of people do it they eat a jig up here so it's something that i want to present to them the last thing i'm going to have i'm going to rig it up probably on this rod right here it's not set up yet i gotta actually take care of it but i'm gonna put a one and a quarter on there um, a little bit lighter because i know i'm gonna run into some mats that aren't as thick so i want a little lighter presentation but we're gonna have three different punch rods two one and a half might go a little heavier if it's windy but two one and a half one with a punch skirt one without one to throw naked and then a one and a quarter on a little shorter slightly lighter rod for some of that thinner stuff and we'll see because maybe sometimes you get a bite on that lighter thing we're going to like gunnersville i'm coming you're coming let's go hang out punch for some bass all right so this is how excited i am it's like one in the morning my hair's a mess i'm a mess i can't sleep because i'm so stoked about going to gunnersville tomorrow dude i'm sure you've like felt this before but i'm like pacing in my mind back and forth like how am I gonna pitch this? How am I gonna fish this? Where's the grass gonna be? How's it gonna work? Like, it's just a million questions firing all at the same time. I need to sleep, because I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel it in the morning, boy. But I can't tell you how excited I am to get out there tomorrow. This is going to be epic. Made it to Lake Gunnersville. Here's kind of a crazy story. So last night, you saw I like couldn't sleep and that. So I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep, dude. Freaking, there were like tornadoes and stuff went through. There was all this severe weather. The boat got it didn't get tore up, but it was filled with water when I woke up. We are over at this is Jackson County Park. Um, Scottsboro's right over there. As we we're coming up here, there's trees down. There's guys like sawing trees, but it was some some bad weather, dude. Really bad, actually. But we're out at the lake. I don't know. So here's where like learning comes into play. I have no idea how like the the extra rain influences like does it make the river dirty? Does it make the water dirty by the mats? Does it does it focus them on more flow? Does it create more flow and make the fishing better? I have no idea. So I don't know how the weather's gonna change kind of like the factors we have going. All I know is I am freaking jacked up because I am about to drop the boat in a Lake Gunnersville. This is why I moved freaking 12 hours from Florida. This is <laughs> literally what it's all about. So let's get out there and let's make something happen. Hey, sit down. So we made it out here. Let me show you what we're fishing. This is a big kind of mixed grass flat all right here. And there's a small little creek right through here that, that cuts down a little bit deeper. It's anywhere from like four to eight feet right on this edge. And I'm pitching the edge all the way in. One thing I am keying in on is the currents coming this way. So I'm trying to tap on those edges that face into the current because we are fishing a river. But let me tell you a couple things that I've, I've picked up on. So I've missed two bites thus far. I haven't caught a fish yet. But the two bites that I've gotten have been very finicky. One was straight on the drop, and then right after that, I kind of like, maybe I need to slow down. So I pitched in, and it's funny how everything is, is kind of alike, but kind of different. You know, we're fishing deeper mats than I'd usually fish down on Okeechobee, say. But like, I pitch in, and I just start pumping the bait. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, I got second place in a BFL and had a, just a killer map bite. I think it was way back in 2013 or 2012. And basically, I was suspending that bait just under the roof of the mat, just under the canopy. And, and dude, this fish came up and boom, boom, boom. Like, and granted, it was probably a small one, but it tells me something because the water temp's also gone down a little bit from what I understand. It's in the upper 50s, which is a little bit cooler. It's kind of that transition period from where they start to kind of like, start to get into their like winter deals you start to get in the 50s low 50s so i think these fish are real finicky because we got a lot of rain it cooled off the water the other thing that i'm doing and, and then this will be all for tips and I'm, I'm going straight to fishing but like i said the current's coming this way i'm a firm believer in the trolling motor scaring fish we've seen it on okeechobee a ton of times i've seen it in dude the everglades holiday park that trolling motor spooks fish if you stay off that trolley you will catch fish behind people like big ones dude so what I'm doing is I'm actually using the current to have a slow control drift this way. I'm not going against the current. The other thing that I'm doing too is my power poles, even though they won't touch the bottom when we hit like eight feet or so, you can see all this strandy kind of gunk grass and that, the milfoil that's down there. I might drop those from time to time and what they'll do is they'll get caught on a little bit of grass and they'll slow my drift. I'll use them almost like a drift sock, but they're, they're drift toothpicks kind of deal. 
but that's where we're at. I'm downsizing. Um, because of those finicky bites, I'm gonna go down to a BB Cricket with a one and a half, and I still have, where is it, my, my punch skirt deal right here with just a little crawdaddy. But I'm gonna try some smaller baits. I wanna get some bites, and I wanna get confident because I'm not confident. And I've only gotten two bites in about an hour and a half or so. I want to get some confidence. I want to understand how the fish are set up, how they bite. Every fish bites different. And uh, once we do that, maybe once the sun comes up and starts warming things up, that bite might turn on. We can go to some bigger baits and do some other things, all right? Fish on that. It's a giant, too. It's a giant. First freaking Gunnersville bass. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Dude, he barely touched it. I mean, I'm talking like didn't even eat it. It's like a two and a half. Oh, my God. On the BB Cricket, guys. It's like, oh, my God. Look how square those fish are. My first Gunnersville best in all this crap. Dude barely touched it. I'm talking like kissed it. Just like what we were talking about before where I was pumping super slow and suspending that bait. Bro. Oh, let's get her released. That is awesome. Puff in the chair. <laughs> yes, yes. Mikey Balls Fishing, family, bros, homies, all of you. That, dude, that, like, my mind is, I'm so, like, jittery and excited. Like, all I wanted to, like, it's pathetic, you know? I mean, you guys watch the videos, you know I've caught a lot of fish and, you know, done a lot of different things, you know, put my time in and that. But all I wanted to do today was catch one fish punching. I don't care if I don't catch another fish all day. I just wanted to go out here and say, I got a bite, and I caught a fat, like, a bass on Lake Gunnersville. And that's what just happened. Here's what's even cooler, is I caught him doing like a technique, like a suspended punching technique that really I do in Florida. I'm pretty darn good at it. I'm not saying it's going to be like insane, but what you do, a fish came right out of this air, actually right over here. One thing I've noticed is the water temps drop. These fish seem to be in the, the thicker stuff. There's some more sparser kind of mats, but if you can get the stuff that's a little more situated, that's thicker, and then you target around these kinds of holes, that's where they seem to be sitting. That's where I've gotten my bites. I only caught one fish, but that's where I've gotten my bites and isolated stuff. I mean, that's like across the country, I guess, isolated cover. But the deal is, I'm pitching in there, I'm lifting the bait to the top, I'm feeling for a bite first. It's like six, seven foot, five foot. So you got the bait going down suspended. But then I'm lifting it up, and I'm trying to get to the top of the mat, the underside top of the mat, and I'm going like this. Whoop, whoop, or I'm just holding it right under. That fish ate it. Like, I didn't even feel him bite it. He just kind of grabbed it, and there was weight. I could have felt like I was hung on grass, but kind of felt a little funny so I just leaned back and that's where having a rod that has that that bendable tip I know a lot of guys want like a real stiff rod or just like a banging rod but I kind of like a little bit of a girly rod when you're doing this kind of stuff when they're in a weird mood that tip can kind of forgive you because especially if you don't feel the bite and you're already kind of like loading up all you gotta do is reel down and just keep on pulling gunners fill bass challenge fulfilled I'm happy I'm gonna be all stoked yeah I'm gonna go home and be like woo you know but we got a lot more to fish now. Let's get after it. Head on the way down. Wow, I didn't even feel him bite. Wow, they are biting super finicky. That's my second fish right there, though, boys. Little guy, but learning more and more with every bite that we get. Fish on, guys, fish on. Man, I had to wait a while to get her to bite. Not a giant, but dude, they do not want to bite. Once again, BB Cricket, I switched colors, but dude, they are just so moody. Just sitting there dangling it, and then they come up and they grab it. There we go, guys. That's a good one. 
There's a freaking three pounder. <laughs> I'll drop the poles. How about that? They got her to the three pounder, dude, and she would have come off because I didn't get the hook on her. She ate it and she stopped bulk. She bolted, dude. Absolutely bolted. Let's get her back. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Just as I'm about to leave. Basically, we're, we're fishing these little isolated clumps. Wherever it gets a little more chunky, we're pitching in there. And I just saw a brim pop up, dude. And I, literally, I was about to leave. But I think we're going to hang out for another 25 minutes or so. Well guys, so here's the update. It's about mid-afternoon, about lunchtime or so. This little guy has been the key. See, they got the grass there too. Dude, freaking that BB Cricket. I've gotten a few bites on the Stinger, but that BB Cricket, these fish are super duper pressured. They're coming off a huge tournament. The grass is thinning out, I guess. I talked to this old man who kind of told me about um, how it works here, where the grass kind of gradually dies off during the winter, so it becomes smaller and smaller, less stuff to fish, less area for the fish to be in. But it's a grind. I'm fishing super duper slow, pumping the bait a lot, getting a lot of bites that way. I only had like one or two bites on the drop, and um, I missed a big one, dude, which, which sucks. But we're still on the hunt for that big one. This is awesome, though. Totally caught my first like set of Gunnersville fish. And dude, doing something I absolutely love, punching freaking mats. They're, they're hydrilla, they're milfoil, they're chopped eel grass, just junky, gunky mats, and just go slow and make those pitches. But we're gonna try one more spot and then we're gonna wrap it up for the day. I'm gonna have a little snack. Bog, how you doing? Yeah. Bog's just suntanning. He's like, he's like a chick, dude. He just like sits and tans and hangs out. But make sure you like and subscribe. We're going to our next spot. Let's see if we can get a big one. That's it. That's it. That's the one. That's the one. Look out, Bonk. Look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. <laughs> we caught a giant. That's a five pounder. Oh my god, we were running out of daylight there, boys. <laughs> On the stinger, it's probably like four and a half. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. That's what we were trying to do. Guys, this afternoon has been a grind, but we call it like a four and a half, dude. That for me, that's a big one out here, dude. Just getting started like this, all punching mats. You can see him down here. It was on the gambler stinger, just pitching in. She ate it, dude. Started running to the side, but I'm going to get her back real quick. Solid. <laughs> that's awesome. I can't believe it. Oh, hello. Goodbye. They're such strong fish. Oh, my arm is destroyed, dude. Like, I pitched and pitched and pitched, punched and pit, and dude, it's been a grind. But that fish and those other ones make it all worth it. Dude, punching Lake Gunnersville. First time out here, popping the cherry. <sighs> Caught my first Gunnersville fish. This is huge, dude. This is so huge. Guys, thank you for coming along with me on this first of many adventures, dude. In a different state, learning to fish. Don't forget, we're gonna be back in Florida probably in like two months, a month and a half or so. So we'll be able to take advantage of some of those like big Florida spawning, fun, deep water, Okeechobee, all that stuff. But right now we're right here and we are on beautiful Lake Gunnersville and I popped my cherry out here. I'm so stoked. You know, it wasn't the most amazing fishing day, but my biggest goal today was just to catch one. And we, we definitely caught one, we caught a big one, we caught like a four and a half pounder, at least big for me, I mean, anything. I'm, dude, I'm breaking PBs every time I catch a fish out here because I've never caught them out here. So it, it's gonna be an amazing experience. It's going to be a, a, a process, you know? Like, I'm gonna have to learn. I gotta throw a shout out to my boy, Kyle Walters. He just won the Costa Championship out here on Lake Gunnersville, and he gave me a few tips to come out here. And, you know, the tips were great because they gravitated towards something I know how to do, punching, flipping, fishing grass and it was a good way like when you fish a, a new lake it's it's really important to get confidence and to kind of get started on the right foot and I really needed to get that confidence because I'm not going to come out here and just like 
throwing a rig like wherever and stuff like that. I don't know how to do that. I don't understand that. I need something to say, hey, I caught some fish out there. I can probably go out there and find some fish and kind of make something come together. And really, that's what today was about. It was about breaking the cherry, the Gunnersville cherry, which happened, especially with a big one. But it was also about getting some confidence. And that's really important when you're fishing a new body of water. Get some confidence. Do something that you know how to do. Fish are fish. There might be slight variations and nuances to what they're doing, but fish are fish. They're going to behave like fish. So let's do a quick technique wrap up. And as you know, we were punching, flipping mats, hydrilla, milfoil, chop grass, all, all, any kind of junky floaty stuff that had some water under it that those bass could get under. And that's what I guess happens up here in fall is there's that frog bite, they're under those mats and they come up for it, but there's also a punching bite where they're under those mats, but you go after them and get them. We're using a one and a half ounce weight for the most part. I did try to throw a one and a quarter a little bit, didn't come together. Also tried the punch skirt, did not come together. So generally one and a half, straight shank hook, and then these were the two baits. This is a gambler stinger. And then this was key this morning. The bite was not on. We had some nasty storms, like crazy tornado storms last night. And I think it lowered some of the water temps. It stirred the grass around and the fish were not in the mood. It definitely brought some dirty water out of some of these creeks so that actually as you move back towards the back of them, that water started getting gunky. And let me throw you a little quick tip. That's where we ended up catching the fish. They weren't all the way across these stretches, but it seemed like where that water was mixing, you'd have like a hundred yard stretch where you'd catch some fish. But stinger, BB cricket, pumping, not too many fish on the drop. The big ones seemed to bite on the drop, missed a big one this morning, and then caught that four and a half pounder. The rest of them were kind of just kind of lifting the bait and kind of raising it and holding up at the canopy or just pumping it, pumping. You remember that from back in 2012, 2013, the old pumping technique. As usual, guys, I can't thank you enough for watching the video. You guys have supported these videos and made this channel what it is. And without you, we'd be nowhere. I wouldn't be in Alabama, I'll tell you that much. But I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Tell a buddy, do you tell one or two people, hey, go check out Mikey Balls Fishing. Subscribe, check it out. I think you'll like it. 49 pound bag, right? But that's gonna be a wrap on today. I'm gonna get it wrapped up. The time has changed out of here, so it's gonna get dark really early. It's one thing I hate about central time, but gotta live with it. Got like Gunnersville, right? So we're gonna get it wrapped up. Bog, how do you feel? Sleeping bog, sleeping bog. Bog had a long day, I had a long day. As usual, if you guys need any kind of tips and like technique recommendations or anything like that, I don't know everything, but I'm happy to help you out. Shoot me a message, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you like to use. And if you want to see a certain kind of video out here, or if you want me to go fishing with you up in Alabama, not too far away from Alabama, I'm not ready to travel that far, hit me up. But till next time, I don't know where we're gonna be, but I guarantee you we're gonna be somewhere on the water, tight lines.